Good morning, good morning, good morning. Overcast morning. <laughs> Look at that corn. One day it's not there and the next day it's there. That's the sort of stuff you run into if you want to hide from the police, isn't it? Well, in American films it is anyway. So I hope you're well. Got the memory chip back in the uh, camera. Thanks to my new fast computer at work, I'm able to uh, process and upload the videos at work now, so that's uh, considerably uh, streamlined the process. Poor old video. YouTube's going to have to rent a few more hard drives to put my videos on. One day it'll just send me a letter and say, look Mr Watson, there's no... Uh, nobody's watching your videos. Do we, do we need to store them? I don't think we do really. <laughs> I hope you've got copies of them because we're going to press the button and wipe them all out. So, to which I should say, yes, I do have copies. Thank you very much. And they provide a very valuable social narrative which will be useful 10,000 years in the future. And will no doubt get analysed by some artificial intelligence charged with identifying the uh, background to the headline events of the 21st century. I don't mind being famous after I die. Anyway, the um, what I wanted to talk about, having done a having done a sort of a video on uh, Boris and uh, Sunet and uh, Truss and pretty much predicted that Truss is going to win. Um, thought we'd get back to dentistry and talk about something that's, uh, again, is uh, an issue at the moment, perhaps for some of you, and that is how to deal with um, the influx of Ukrainian citizens who've uh, come into the UK and been sponsored very kindly by people who are receiving hundreds of pounds a month and uh, and uh, I've had a, a family of three mother and uh, two daughters mothers in their 70s, 80s daughters are in their 40s, 50s and um, they, they come in, they came in because one of the daughters had severe toothache and so she needed a root filling so um, we did that and then it turned out that her sponsor had paid for it. it a, they're a lovely couple, you know, they're a little, um, you know, nice middle-aged couple, sort of uh, been uh, driven to sponsor a Ukrainian family in the same way as they would adopt a Rwandan orphan, you know, or some stuff like that. Um, the fact that they've got a load of um, properties, I don't know whether how relevant that is. It's possibly that they're putting the money towards the properties. Anyway. What is this? Oh, it's just, they're spraying the... Um, huh. They poured last night and they're now they're spraying the fields. Well, I suppose they're growing something that's very water hungry. Um, yeah, so 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 what's the issues really with Ukrainian families? Well, I mean, language can be a barrier, but most of the time it's not too bad because uh, they will come in with someone who speaks English, you know, some Ukrainian friend who speaks English. And a lot of them are um, learning English, it's all part of the package. And a lot of them are... Uh, already pretty fluent in English <clears throat> and lastly uh, they're very quick at picking it up I mean you don't really need an awful lot of, um, of language really to just to say you've got toothache <clears throat> and we found this out because when I worked in uh, Raynham in Kent 
we were very close to Chatham, which at the time was a active port and had a lot of ships coming in from all over the world and used to get a lot of people in. You know, I mean, let's take Filipino, for example, who spoke no English at all. And he might come in with a friend or he might just point to his tooth and then you can look in the mouth and, and see what the problem is, you know. People say they can't speak like the sign language, but you can. You can, you know, everybody knows a cup of tea. Most people know, take a tooth out. <laughs> yeah, so to, to cut to the chase, the biggest problem with most of the Ukrainian people I've seen is um, that the quality of their dentistry is very poor. For some reason, uh, by the time they're in their 20s, they've all had about between 5 and 10 root fillings. And I honestly don't understand, unless it's because they have no uh, dental care as a child and then all of a sudden when they turn 18 they're entitled to have their teeth root filled or something. But they have, they have a far, they're well off the bell curve in terms of the number of root fillings they've had by the time they're young. And that's a contradiction because the quality of the root fillings for the most part are, the fillings in particular are pretty good. Uh, the root fillings I would say not so much so in terms of filling to the tip. However, in terms of being painless, in other words un not symptomatic, uh, for the most part, you know, you'll find someone with 12 what look like rubbish root treatments and yet they'll not be having, there's been no gum boils or anything, no pain or anything. So I do not know what they're doing over there. Whatever they're doing over there is working for them. Um, I don't think they're putting steroids inside the teeth because uh, you'd smell that when you took the old root fillings out. It would be, you get a sort of a yellow uh, paste inside the canal and you can smell a sort of iodine type smell so it's not they're not using steroids but they're just doing it uh, just to the point where it's just sort of good enough from what I can see but the trouble is that the good enough approach sometimes is not good enough and so people then have toothache so they come in with toothache and um, you tell them that they need to have the root filling redone uh, because it's got this pathetic tiny point in a massive canal that doesn't even go to the tip. You've got signs of periapical bone loss and obviously you've got a patient who's complaining like mad that they're tooth aching. Um, now in the past when someone came who was even if they were living in the UK if they were from Bulgaria or Hungary or Romania or somewhere and you said to them you need, you need a root filling they will say that's fine give me antibiotics and I'll, uh, I'll go back to Hungary and get it done because it's much cheaper in Hungary. I can get it done much cheaper. And I'll be like, fine, that's fine, okay, off you go. You know, I don't mind. If you can get a root filling done for 80 quid in Hungary that I'm going to charge you 500 quid for here, then go and see your rallies at the same time, then good for you. Uh, I know the sort of root treatment you'll get in Hungary or Romania, uh, but if it works for you, then that's fine. But of course, with Ukrainians, they don't really have the option. You know, they uh, the one woman. She did actually. I could see it flashing through her mind. She did think. Uh, she said to me, "Okay, I said I give you antibiotics." She said, "Yes," and then, and she was just about to say, "Then I'll, um, then I'll go and get it done in my country." And they always say my country because it's. And then, uh, but she didn't say it because she knew that going back to. Um, Kharkiv, I think it was, is not not an option really for dental treatment. So then, so then, what do you do? I mean, there's this incredibly generous sponsor who's who's got her over here double time. He's got a uh, found accommodation for her in one of his empty houses. Has then found out she's in a lot of pain, dental problems. Sponsored her for another 400 quid, I think, for a premolar root filling and then um, been told that um, she's got another couple of teeth which are partly root filled and got bone loss and need to, so she needs another a ton of work, you know, another thousand pounds worth of work. Which is she quite rightly said to me, there's, you know, I can't go back to an artist bloke for more that amount of money, I just can't do it. 
<clears throat> and this is a, a woman who was an assistant professor of languages at the local university. So she's used to being sort of quite high up the um, high up the sort of uh, social and financial ladder in Ukraine. Now, Ukraine is uh, not fighting for its freedom because there was no freedom in Ukraine. Ukraine is a former Soviet uh, socialist republic was very poor, very poor country and also not free at all uh, in terms of, uh, you know, it, it comes well down the league table of countries in, in terms of measuring them by the amount of freedom that the population had. What they are doing is they're fighting for their sovereignty. In other words, they're fighting for their right to stay poor and corrupt. And I, for one, support them in that fight. However, it doesn't help them if they come to this country and they're thrown from one of the poorest countries in Europe into one of the wealthiest countries in Europe, or well, I would say one of the most expensive countries in Europe. Bearing in mind we're bankrupt, but I mean we're still, we're still one of the most expensive countries in Europe. So, you know, that's, it's, it really is obviously starting again, isn't it? Being a refugee is just completely starting again. And I'm just wondering what our role is as dentists in assisting people like that. What are you, what is your responsibility to your patients in general? You know, turn it into a general question. Over and above your responsibility to do a good job and uh, uh, treat people fairly and keep the surgery working and you know, publish your fees and you know that's the service that you provide but should you be expected to provide a service over and, over and above that I mean my my general my, my sort of my general opinion on this has always been that if I was paid out of the National Insurance Fund to treat refugees, then I would come up with a service that treated them, and it would be a very good, very efficient service, a lot better than what the NHS provides, I tell you. And that brings in another factor, isn't it? Just because they've come into this country just at the moment that the NHS has collapsed. They literally, I mean, I had a woman in yesterday, young woman, 25 something, rang up Friday, crying, crying down the phone, I'm in so much pain. We were the fifth dentist that she's been to, and the, she'd had four courses of antibiotics for a tooth which basically needs someone to start a root filling on it. And, you know, she was like, can't you do anything, can't you do anything? I, and I'm like, no, I was Friday, I was really just completely booked up, and I was in no mood to ask the staff to stay behind for an hour and work through their lunch hour because I know it sounds harsh, however, we are frequently the surgery of last resort for these people, by which I mean they've been to four useless dentists first, and then they come to us when the problem is fully ripe and fully, fully developed, and they've got the most amount of pain, and they have had the least amount of sleep, and psychologically they are the most desperate and you, you look at and you find out what well, the sorry history of this dentist gave me antibiotics but couldn't do the treatment this dentist gave me antibiotics couldn't do the treatment i said to her your only problem is that you couldn't find a dentist who could start the root filling that's all it boils down that's why you're in so much pain and so what we did within a day well, one working day anyway because you know she had she came back monday um, we actually arranged to start the root filling. So we, um, I asked the girls yesterday, Monday, if they wouldn't mind working into their lunch hour, which they didn't mind so much because they do work Monday afternoons, whereas they don't work Friday afternoons, so I didn't feel it was fair on them. But I know, you know, part, part of you, that the helpful part always was to say, well, of course, yeah, we'll do. We'll wait. Don't you worry about us. We'll work all day. We'll work all night. You know, my brother once said to me, 
if you um, opened a surgery at uh, 11 o'clock on a Sunday night, he said, it, it'll be packed, it'll be packed. You have to um, set some rules for your own mental health in terms of your workload. I mean, I'm still working after 40 years. It makes me laugh now when you, you know, I see the news and they say, oh, my son's retired, he's 30." two years in the fire service and I'm like 32 very fucking newbie amateur only 32 you know someone paid me the fantastic compliment the other day I was took them for an x-ray and I was going on about this and that about what was wrong with their teeth and how they could fix everything and they said to me you really enjoy your job don't you you really enjoy it and I like well yeah I do yeah I, I still do I suppose yeah I'm pleased that came across you know because uh I'm still as enthusiastic about the job as I was on the day I qualified. Apart from that, uh, <laughs> that one patient who decided to sue me for £8,000 because we, uh, she had slight discomfort following a root filling. <laughs> so that rankles somewhat, you know. It's a bit like, you know, you play for a football team and you're the star player for years and then all of a sudden the referee runs on and kicks you in the bollocks and then runs off again and you're like really I mean really <laughs> oh dear so yeah so I mean what I've done is I've said to these Ukrainian family because the mother and uh, the mother also had toothache and I said to we did the same thing we got a numb we de-innovated the tooth we um, and I said to her, you've got to make a decision whether you want it root filled or whether you want it extracted. And then uh, when we told her how much it was to root fill it, which we'd already told her, we'd already told her. I'd already given her a quote for root filling it and extracting it. And then she let us take the nerve out of the tooth and then rang back and said she wanted it extracted. And I'm like, well, that was a bit pointless because if you'd only told me that straight away, then I could have taken it out for you. But um, the deciding factor was when I the daughter said oh my mother wants to have the tooth out and I said is it still giving her trouble and she said yes yes oh yeah still loads lots of trouble lots of trouble and I thought okay well I very very carefully you know cleaned out and de-innovated and dressed this lower left seven and um, if she'd come back and said it's a lot better you know it's um but I, I don't think she felt that it was in her interest to say, yes, it's a lot better. She wants to keep me on the back foot by saying, uh, no, 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 still loads of trouble, you know, still lots of problems. And so, um, um, so then what happens if you tell a dentist that, what he'll do is he'll just say, well, I'll, um, you know, probably better to take it out because I'd rather, I don't know what this car's doing. lost second gear you know so we're going to end up taking it out so I wasted a bit of time de-innovating it so it's roundabouts isn't it all right lovely to talk to you see you soon bye